Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration. I've let's see what have I been doing recently. Well, I've been prevaricating a little bit around round and about the um, the the space stuff um, because as, as I think you probably remember for a little while ago, I was complaining about how little uranium I had coming through from up here. So as you can see, most of these miners have just run out. I've only left these ones in because they're acting as pipes for the sulfuric acid. So there's not very much coming through here, as we know. So I captured this uranium patch down here in an earlier episode. So I've finally come down and I've built a mine across the top of it now. So as you can see, it's um, we're bringing in sulfuric acid by train here. It's getting dropped into these tanks. It's absolutely fine. Um, it's working nicely. We're, we're, we're summoning at least 100,000 of it and there's but for 200 does that mean 230,000 I think it probably does so we've got lots of um, lots of acid available here and that's all being pumped down to the miners down here which are you know mining much as you'd expect and that's flowing into the station great um let's see how much we've got, we've got 26,000 now which that's enough for a train because the train is supposed to come along and pick up as long, as soon as well when there's 20,000 available in the station um Let's see, I've got I've got the green light on here and the twenty six thousand, so I've not messed up this station. I don't think. Maybe it's on the other end. Let's have a look. So at the other end, I've repurposed this um, ammunition drop off station to to, to take out the, the uranium as it comes in. I've just made a copy of the uh, the belt systems I used for the sulphur station and then strung them strung them out so it should come down here and go into the inputs as if it was from this miner, and it'll balance the whole lot together. Nice. Um. Oh. But I've not linked the um, combinator up properly, so it needs to be wired into that pylon there to send the signals to the station before it'll order anything. So that'll be why that's not working. I'm going to need to head back up there at some point. However, in the meantime, I've been using some of that uranium I picked up to make some atomic bombs. So I think it's time to give those a try. I have also made some slightly better armour as well, so we'll put that in there and let that charge up. Okay, with the uh, jetpack. This seems slightly overkill for this sort of size of, of base, but I've, I've got the uh, I've got the bombs, so I'm going to use them. Let's put them in the rocket launcher. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, okay, that was seriously overkill for that size of bite nest. <laughs> um, however, there's a bigger one over here. Let's go and uh, let's give them one as well and see how that goes. I feel like the the map's kind of in the way. I don't want to get too close either. Maybe there. Wow. <laughs> That's quite an explosion. I like that. And interestingly, I think because I'm using the jetpack, the biters aren't really as aware of me as they normally would be. So they're not chasing me quite so much as I'm used to. Oh, I take it back. They are attacking me now. Let's do that to them. Run away. I think there's another small one down here. We can get that on the way past. Ooh. That's a bit closer than I meant to get to them. <laughs> okay, let's hope this wall can uh, deal with them as they come as they come running over. Um, kind of is the answer. <laughs> oh, there's a gap in the wall there. Let's uh, let's sort that out. Right. So um, yeah, nukes are awesome. Turns out. <laughs> They're also really, really expensive. Once I've um, fired another couple of these, I'll um, I'll show you what I mean. Ooh, and turning around is difficult when you're using the um, the jetpack. <laughs> Although the jetpack does make it feel a bit um, cheap and easy to get past the uh, cliffs and things and to leave the biters behind. But I'm not really going to complain about that because I suspect otherwise it'd be extremely difficult. No, I don't want the all the ammunition. There we go. Nope. Oh, never mind. I've got some coal as well. Have I got robots to fix this wall? Yes, I have. Good. Okay. So the reason I'm attacking these biters is because there's a massive uranium patch out here, which I'd like to quite like to get my hands on. As you can see, 2.7 million. That's going to keep me going for ages. And now I think the best way to get this would be to build a wall across here capture this area off and across here because that's a nice tiny peninsula and then I'm hoping that up here this will all be one big sea and I can just build one across there and it's going to be really easy to capture it and then I suppose across here as well the problem with that is there's an enormous number of biter nests up here as you can see 
and that's why I'm going out with nukes instead of the artillery because I'm not sure this wall will be able to take the um, the retribution from from artillery strikes. Still, it's um, and also because I've got all these nukes, and I want kind of want to play with them. So let's go down here as well. And if I fly out over the water, maybe they, they maybe they won't maybe they'll leave me alone. Like this. Oh wow, that's a nice explosion. Ooh. Ah! Don't! Don't! Oh! Oh, I've landed! Why have I landed? <laughs> they literally knocked me out of the sky, it turns out. <laughs> That's not good. I didn't know they could do that. Alright, let's, um... Let's land and, and, uh... Rethink. Rethink the strategy. So that worked really well. So that was two nukes, and it's got rid of the entire massive base that was lurking over that um, uranium patch. So this is going pretty well. I mean, there's a lot more of them to get, and I'm not going to do all of that on camera because it's going to be really, really boring. But the basic idea seems to be quite sound. The only downside of this is if we have a look at the cost to make one of the, these atomic bombs, yeah, that's an enormous quantity of uranium and an enormous quantity of explosives and a lot of rocket control units and solid fuels. We're that's an incredible amount of material going into one of these. Um, so yeah they're lethally powerful but they're astonishingly expensive i might just reserve those for the really big bases like these ones and uh, that one over there and try and get the rest of them with the artillery i think uh, because that was that's just crazy i mean it's like the um the team fortress 2 meme with the, with the heavy he's talking about his uh, his minigun and he says it costs 10 million ten thousand dollars a second to fire or whatever it is However, it is awesome when it goes off, so, you know, it's got that going for it. Now, that's not the only thing I've done recently. So, remember in the last episode I was talking about uh, getting stuff up into space and how I was trying to work out a good way of doing that? Well, in the end, I did move my, uh, my um, what's this, cargo rocket launch, um, cargo rocket silo over here from, from over here, but just to give it a bit more space to, to do, well, stuff around it. And what I've done here is I've got I've got these belts. Each of these belts has got two items, uh, two types of items flowing along it, um, and they're all coming off off the main bus. And then there's loads of them coming over here. Each one of those, and I'm quite I'm quite pleased with the general design of this. Each one of those then goes to a splitter. I haven't bothered to prioritise the splitters because it's just one more thing to remember to do. And this way, if I do decide I want to change them later because I I perhaps I don't need iron in space, for example, then it's going to be less things to tweak. But each of these then has a pair of st uh, filters filter stack inserters on it which I can't actually look at so I'm going to have to go back up there and, um, and point at them because I think there's a what, I, the, what I've done with them is, is relatively important um, how do I even right um, this is going to take a little while so you know I'm going to fast forward it as, as, as usual but I'm reasonably pleased with what I've done with them and the way I've got it to uh, to prioritize the inputs and outputs and make sure basically make sure all, all the right things get passed through in fact while I'm on route let's have a look at the um Let's have a look at the moon, at the, uh, no, the, sp the, the space facility. So remember last episode, I talked about how I'd linked all of my storage facilities up here together. So the big yellow one, the big purple one, and then all the little blue ones. They're all linked together on the red circuit network, which then goes to my transmit signal transmitter here. And that means that everything up here is on the, on the signal network. So you can see over here on the right hand side, it's got a list of all of the stuff in all of my buildings up here. And and that's being transmitted down to my uh, to my ground base, which I still haven't got to. So that's all being transmitted to this receiver here, which is then wired into all of the inserters, and then to this and to the to the uh, silo as well, and also to these two um, constant combinators. Now the combinators are outputting. Let's look at the other one because it's a bit more interesting because there's a bit more in it. They're outputting numbers for all of the things that are being fed into this into this rocket silo. So you see, I've got going around from the top. I've, I've tried to keep them in the same order to keep things organised, so I can actually find stuff. So I've got I've, I've got a um, the combinator saying minus two thousand iron, minus two thousand copper, minus five hundred sulphur, minus that, see, and, and so on, all the way along here and down the side. And that what that means is it's putting these big negative numbers into the into the inv into the um, into the circuit network that are then being essentially then added to by the amount, by the quantities that are in the rocket and in my um, facility up in space. 
because as, 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 as I said, it's being the, what's in space is being transmitted down here to this receiver. All of those things are being totaled up together, and if the total that's in the rocket and up in space comes to the same or greater than the um, than the amount specified in the combinators, then we're going to have a positive number of it on the network. So if I now have a look at the network, you can see that, for example, there's still a thousand iron showing up on there. So that must mean that over the whole system there's about 3,000 iron because I took too much of it up earlier. And if we look in the rocket, then you see all of the stuff that I want to take up with me has been put into here, has been put into here by the by the inserters. If we look at the inserters themselves, each one of those is set to whitelist only the thing that it's dealing with and then set to only run if there's less than zero of that thing in the network. So if there's say say for this this one's petroleum gas barrels if I if I've demand if I've requested 500 of them overall on the combinator so it says minus 500 then it'll keep loading the um, keep loading the rocket up until the number in orbit plus the number in the rocket totals 500 and it cancels out and then or if it goes over then it'll also stop as well. So that's so that's that's what that seems to be working as far as I'm as far as I can tell. There's there's a few things that have um, run over a bit, but if we look at something there's quite a lot of, like the um, the space platform scaffold, for example, that's got got up to a round number. So I expect that means it's got to the right the right number of it. Uh, that's not what I'm going to do. Um, and yeah, it's it's not showing in the list, which means it's obviously hit exactly the right number, and therefore the and therefore the inserters have stopped. And if we look on the appropriate belt, which one's, it's this one down here. Yeah, you can see it started to back up as well. So the inserter has stopped putting it in. In fact, it's backed up all the way back to where it's being made. So the inserter has it has them available, but it stopped putting them into the rocket because there's enough there. So that's that seems to be working really quite well. Now there are a few things. Again, if we look at this, you can see you've still got negative numbers by them. So the the um, space a lot of the space specialist space stuff like the. Um, the space splitter, the space underground belts, the space underground pipes, the space long pipes, and the yeah, that's it, um, are all still showing fairly big negative numbers, and that's that's because they haven't got enough of them in the rocket yet. Now that's a bit odd because this one up, if we look up here, we've got the space splitters coming in here. Ah, and that's because I've not set this one up yet. So I go to here, say that one wants to be space splitters, and uh, only only transfer space splitters, and do so as long as space splitters is less than zero. So now it's starting to put them in there. And we'll see if we look at this, then that, that negative has dropped down to minus 67. And something's getting destroyed. Oh, it's up there. I, yeah, I'm not going to do anything about that at the moment. Uh, so that's now... The, the negative has decreased, or the, the number has increased, so there's only minus 67 of them there now. So that, that is, is gradually filling up. Um, again, I can, I can do this by bringing things in by belt. Um, a lot of these are coming in off the bus, as you can... Where is it? Up here. As you can see, I've got iron and copper coming straight off the bus here, along here, and being fed in off the belt. I've got the um, air box, what are they called? The life support packs, I forget the exact name of them, are coming in by uh, logistics chests. So I've got a blue chest here, it's summoning them, they're dropping in there, and then they're being put in. Um, everything else is coming in by belt, by the looks of it. There's one special one, there's a green wire in here, which um, you may or may not be able to see, depending on whether you're, whether you're colourblind. <laughs> that is set running separately, because that's the, um, that's the, what do you call it, it's the um, rocket parts. There's, there's some of those in orbit, um, because I took some up earlier, which is probably a silly thing to do, but, but I did. So that number's thrown off a bit. If we look at this, there's apparently 127 of them in orbit, so it wouldn't feed any into this. But the, um, this... The silo itself is, out, is outputting 100 now as, it, as the number it's got in it, um, as we can tell if we look at this one. Um, and so that means the uh, this inserter has stopped because it's got to 100 rather than because it's... Uh, Essentially, I only want this inserter to count the ones that are in the that are in this in this silo, not the ones that are in space as well. So I'm using the green network because it's completely separate from the red network and isn't linked up to the tran to the receiver. So it works separately. Um, the fluids are coming in by, well, <laughs> the the oil, the gas and the um, uh, the petroleum gas and the heavy oil are coming in from over here where they're being made on in my um, what do you call it? Uh, coal coal liquidized liquidation facility they're being passed up these really long pipes that come over here and yeah i know long pipes are bad for throughput but it doesn't really matter because they're not they're not limiting anything they're then being shoved into barrels here and being passed along here 
Eventually, when I come back, I'm going to have a lot of spare barrels that I'm going to want to bring back with me, and I'll feed them in here so we stop making them on this in this um, uh, construct assembly machine here. But for now, I'm just making enormous numbers. I've got I've made <laughs> almost 9,000 barrels in total, which is a, feels like a fairly crazy number. Um, yeah, so that's all gone into my rocket. That's now ready to go into space again and, and drop all the stuff off in my um, on my on my uh, orbital base. And then hopefully I'll actually have all the things I need um, because oh, I, I can't remember what I realised I'd forgotten. Before. Oh yes, it was the it was the space belts. Um, are we back? Yes, we're back. Uh, yeah, so that those are things I am in theory gradually building up. The problem is, and I. I might have to tweak this a little bit. Is it space? All these space stuff takes a very long time to build. So we're building space belts here in this assembly machine, but it takes the bloody ever to make them. It's a, it's a what? A um, a ten sec, ten second recipe to make what? Is that what two pieces of belt? Um, I don't know. It often is. Maybe it's only one piece of belt, and those and those are not only are they feeding this, feeding the belt that goes over to the uh, assembly machines, they're also feeding these two as well. I think what I might have to do, for the sake of my own sanity and just getting this done, is put in another pair of assembly machines like this and have both of these also making the um, space normal space belts. And this way, things are going to go a bit quick. Oh, goodness sake. <laughs> Why does nothing ever fit? There's so much spaghetti going on here, it's just not even funny. I can link these up as well, because the, the, yeah, these space belts require lube, because of course they do, just to make things a bit more complicated. And I want to feed that down to there, I want to feed that up to there, and I want to stop doing that, because it makes things too slow. I want it to go up, so it's come down. <laughs> And I need a normal splitter in here. I don't need any of the space weirdnesses. Oop, no, that way. No, that way. And this way I can start building the uh, building these um, things three times as fast, I guess, because it's going to have going to be using all of the um, the material the uh, materials from all three of these from three separate um, belt manufacturing factories. So that'll speed things up a bit. Uh, how how are we doing down here? Oh, okay, so normal space pipes because it's caught up now. Um, we're still short of, yeah. So it's the it's the three the three types of belts, and the um, and the long space pipes and the underground space pipes that are slow at the moment. Um, that's probably supposed to have a underneath like that. Where are my pipes? Pipes are being made over here, and this one I have already split out. I've got three separate machines. One making pi pipes. Why is that? Oh, pipes was okay. Okay, um, it was the long pipes and the underground pipes because, much like the normal underground pipes, these take an enormous number of inputs. It takes ten pipes to make one underground pipe, um, which I mean I suppose is sort of fair enough because they do go quite a long way, uh, but it does mean it's a rather slow process. These long pipes, they're fifteen long when they take eight to put into them. So again, I suppose I can't really complain about that. You're getting quite a lot of pipe for your pipe. Yeah, it's just a bit slow, and I've requested rather a lot of them. How many have I requested? I think it's this one. Um, oh, I've requested 200 underground pipes and 100 underground, uh, uh, sorry, long pipes. So, yeah, that's why it's taking a long time. <laughs> Maybe I'll just go, ah, sod it, I'll just work with the, what I've got. Um, where are they? They're up here. So I've got, I've got 59 and 74. That's not too bad, actually. It might be about time I just went, yeah, I'm going to head up to space. Or I can carry on prevaricating and... Um, I'm blowing up biters. There's no shortage of them down here. Let's see. What I'll probably do is I'll head down here. I'll use up the other four rockets that I've got left over because I've made them. So you know you. Well, you feel like when you've made these massive rockets, you kind of want to use them, don't you? So I'll go down here. Maybe drop one about here and take out most of this. And another one there. Third one there. And the fourth one perhaps down here. I could even roll up with the artillery and, give, and use that a bit. So yeah, let's. Um, while I'm waiting for my um, exploration rocket to fill up, I'll go out and do some grot grotesque violence and blow some stuff up. That sounds like good fun, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, I won't make you sit through that though, because it's it's not that exciting. Once you've seen a couple of nukes go off, they um, well, that's you've seen a couple. I am impressed that the explosions are so big that they actually leave marks and scorches, scorch marks on the map. Though that's 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 incredible. 
Um, yeah, it's so much better than the... I think a, a couple of versions ago of Factorio, they... Um, well, you didn't get the big mushroom cloud for one thing. It was just a, it was just a ring of explosions that got explodier and explodier and just made more and more and more explosions. Now we've got the, that massive mushroom cloud in the middle as well. And there was no sort of evidence left behind, apart from if you use them in a forest, you got a suspiciously circular clearing in the middle of the forest. <laughs> that was quite good. Uh, but you didn't have you didn't have the massive scorch mark. So these these are much nicer because of that. So right, yeah, let's head down and do that, and I'll see you in the next episode. Thanks for watching and. Yeah, I can't wait to get back into space again. <laughs>